All right, so yeah, the King's Dilemma Chronicles. Thank you to Keymailer for uh, my very first key, I think. I think I had, may have had a key to something before, but anyway, I think it's my first one. I'm going to give it a go. Thank you very much. Enter the developers. Horrible Guild, Trouble Big Game Studio, Big Trouble Game Studio, Trouble Big Game Studio, whichever way that goes. Let's go. Warning, this game contains disturbing images and scenes of implied violence. It's a good start. There are references to slavery, abuse, racism, physical violence, domestic abuse, suicide, substance abuse, sexual violence, and limited gory imagery, or as I call it, Tuesday night. Lol. Human sacrifices blood that some may find distressing or disturbing. Player discretion is advised. None of the atrocities described in the King's Dilemma Chronicles are in any way endorsed by the creators and the distributors of this game or myself. Let me just get that out there too. Right, there you go. Introduction. Welcome to the Kingdom of Ankist, a place of daring expeditions, gruesome battles, and arcane mysteries. Polafwa Mountains. Brown Hills. Interesting. Okay. The Known Lands. Located in the northern content of Lywick, Ankist is one of the largest kingdoms of the known world, but is not the only one. The kingdom of Mua, to the northwest, advanced both culturally and technologically. The small and harmless kingdom of Sidlada, to the south, with its stingy lands. The Republic of Kalpias to the northeast with commercial abilities beyond imagination. I don't know, I can imagine quite a bit. The Kasukian Empire to the distant east where the Emperor lives in opulence while the people struggle. Sounds about right. The southern continent, barely explored, is only known for the fierce Ivory Desert and the tales and legends shared by the few foreign travellers venturing to our lands. Our lands? Inkist has been enjoying several decades of peace, but less than two centuries ago it was divided into many small kingdoms and raider tribes, conquered in wars or united by diplomacy over the centuries to be incorporated as douches or marks. Okay. Little is known about what happened before this age of fragmentation, but what we know for sure is that all the lands of the known world were ruled by several lost civilizations throughout the ages. What caused these civilizations to fall is unclear. You are going to assume the role of the head of the council. That's why I've got the crown. A governing body ruling in the name of the king located in Libra, the capital city of Ancast. Libra? Libra? Before you begin, take a quick test at... Oh, I'm whistling. To determine the house that suits you best. Okay. In a financial crisis, is it moral to sacrifice knowledge in order to save money? Sacrifice knowledge? No, never. Nay. Click and hold the button. Nay! Is it okay to restrict certain religious practices that clash with the established cult? Well, th these are difficult questions, but um, are I? If a neighboring country gets invaded, do we step in to support them? I. With childbirths on decline, do we strongly incentivize families to have children? Nay, let nature do its thing. Houses of Ankist. Each house has a different long-term goal and backstories which affects their mutual relationship and affinity. Select info to read more about the two houses and make your choice. What's that say? Jork? Lork? Choose your house. Hit hard, we can take it. A pig or a lobster? Gamam. I wanted the snake. Gamam, work is life. Talk, talk, thank you. Uh, info. Marquises of talk. Hit hard, we can take it. Seeking support from a bigger and richer country to help contain the frequent assaults of raiders coming from beyond its uncertain northern borders, talk joined the Kingdom of Ancus in the year 75. It is a poor place where the central authority struggles to survive, tormented by incursions from barbaric Skaram tribes that live in the hills at the foot of the Fola Fua Mountains. Fua! 
If Libra and the whole of Ancius can sleep peacefully, they owe it to your brave and proud people, forged by many battles and the hostile climate of your territory. Thick clouds cover your homeland during winter, when extremely long nights produce endless horrors. Animal carcasses are found, animals' carcasses are found ripped apart in unnatural ways. The remnants of dark and obscure rituals perpetrated by ominous cultists are found in the countryside, and shadows agitate the vast forests. Torkins, however, are not intimidated and always react to any threat in the same way, by fighting. The courage and resilience of your warriors is also incarnated in your family, who have joined its warriors in battle on the front lines for generations. You often lead hunts for cultists and other horrors to protect the population. Despite your fighting skills, you never find pleasure in taking someone's life and you fight only to defend your people. No one is sent to die in battle lightly, as your population is scarce compared to the vastness of your territory. Everyone does their part in talk, from the warriors to priestesses, who often go on the battlefield to bless the soldiers. In some rare, extreme cases, they even join the fight. Your aspiration is that everyone would unite to fight the horrors and the dangers that infest the world, and that the Torkins are not left alone to shed their blood to defend it. Bruh! Okay. Okay. Gamam. Wait, I just clicked on... Oh, the, uh, the, oh, we are nemeses. We're nemeses. Work is life. Yeah, it doesn't seem likely. The Dukes of Gamam. Once an independent kingdom, the Duchy of Gamam was annexed by Ancus in the year 130 after the army of that kingdom surrounded the capital, the Golden Port. Also known as the Lobster People, you are capable traders and hard workers. You are constantly busy and you spend so much time complaining that you have no time to enjoy the fruits of your work and prosperous land. You're obsessed with the fact that life is too short. Gamam people have, a, have developed a special sensitivity for beautiful and luxurious things. You take pride in your efficiency and prosperity and you often complain that you pay too much tax. Bunch of whinges! You feel that your relationship with the central administration of the kingdom is only one way. You give so much to the crown without receiving anything back but taxes. From the outside, you are seen as demanding, arrogant and fussy, but also elegant and sophisticated. Your capital is clean and secure. All of your people, including you and your family, complain that life ends too soon. You would give anything to have more time to enjoy the wealth you accumulate in your hardworking life. So, whingers or fighters? I guess fighters? I, I you know. Right. Okay. Fine. Let's, um... We're going to be the talks. The talks, bruh. I've got to hold. A group of scholars in Libra, Libra recently discovered that ancient chronicles often blame a black circle, a dark rising sun, and a cursed eclipse or other similar images for causing the demise of many past empires. After observing similar clues in recent years, historians started speculating about the existence of a secret society that has been leading civilizations to oblivion for centuries. This organization is referred to as the Black Dawn. You do have a game in your game somewhere here, right? Some think they are a force of chaos, others view them as an engine for creative destruction, and some view them as the heralds of a new dawn, harbingers of progress and change. Whatever their true nature really is, it seems that a huge battle is coming, if that is your real nature. As head of the council, you have the power to shape the future of this kingdom, but the Black Dawn is lurking in the shadows. Its existence is threatening and yet intriguing. Your role is to inform the king about the decisions of the council, but it is within your power to alter them if you so wish, provided you have enough power. It's time to begin. A new king is about to be crowned. How will the future of Ankist unfold? Bajin. The King's Dilemma. The trumpets strike three rising notes and 81 doves are released as Harold V is crowned king by the prior mother of the cult. Of course he is. Harold V. The people erupt in a cheer of joy. Our hopes of enduring prosperity are renewed with a new king. He doesn't look that happy about it. Foreign dignitaries from Kasuk, Kapias, Tidlada and Mir crowd the royal castle to evaluate the new king and win his favour. The ceremony is followed by a feast lasting for three days and nights along all the streets of Libra, our capital city. 
A week later, sitting on his throne behind the grand chisel door of the council room, the new king addresses us for the first time. Any authority is flickering, and power can be a blessing or a curse for those on whom it is exercised, he says. After a long pause, he adds, a ruling is an unsolvable dilemma. Add to archives. Oh, that thing moved up. Eclipse. The Eclipse keeps track of the six storylines of the King's Dilemma, chronicles advancing with each story chapter. When all storylines are completed, the Eclipse will end and the Uprising will start. Right, gotcha, yes, uh, continue. This is the map of the Kingdom. From here, choose your next dilemma from the sidebar. Change the zoom level between the entire continent, the Kingdom of Ankist, and the capital city of Libra, Libra, to reveal all available dilemmas. These five resources represent the status of the kingdom, influence, wealth, morale, welfare, and knowledge. Every dilemma will move one or more of these resources, changing the stability of the current region. Oh, current reign. Current reign in Spain. Uh, okay. Good to know. That's fantastic to know. Talk, Fair Thorn. Influence represents the strength of your army, your reputation in the eyes of other countries, how effectively you enforce the law, and the respect the people of Ankist have for your leadership. Wealth represents the amount of money in the royal treasury, the amount of luxury resources you have, the quality of life of the upper classes, and your power to buy resources from other countries. Morale represents the happiness of your people, how positive they are about their lives and their condition, how much they believe in a better future and how much they can find relief in religion. Welfare represents the health of your population and the amount of availability of necessity, amount and availability of, necessi of necessity resources like food and water. It's also the lack of maladies and the amount of people in your kingdom. Gotcha, gotcha. Knowledge represents the quantity and quality of the technological and medical advances achieved by your kingdom, the measure of your cultural and artistic expressions, and how much you know about the past history of the world. Stability represents the equilibrium of your society. It is at its best when it's the middle of its track, meaning that the realm is perfectly balanced like all things. When it nears the lower end of its track, things are going extremely badly, causing social tensions. When it nears the top end, on the other hand, some factions are accumulating more power than others, creating instability. Map, Ankist. Golden Harbour. The Royal Marshal reports to us that the three windmills were s. Talk. Right, okay, so... What's all this? Archives. The archives collect information about past reigns as well as all the recorded history of the kingdom. Check previous chapters of the story, all recorded chronicles, uncovered mysteries, and an encyclopedia that contains information about the known world. Sure, sure, gotcha. Looks fantastic. Gotcha. How do I get out of this now? There we go. So we've got the world, where we've got City of Tents. Right, and Ankist has two, and then Libra, the city itself, has nothing. Um, I'm going to start on World 1. Well, the world, and do City of Tents. The king... Oh, I have to hold it down. Morano, a rich merchant from a... Am I supposed to be able to read this? It's called the what? All right, let's do it. Oh, hello, sir. Marano, a rich merchant from a remote desert city called the City of Tents, wants to negotiate a lucrative trade agreement. Among his samples of goods is a slave concubine in chains. He claims the woman comes from a desert temple that allegedly hides the Golden Map, a fabled item we've been seeking for decades. Many of our people are against slavery. As am I. Do we force Murano, a rich merchant, to free the slave? Fucking oath we do. To solve a dilemma, use your power to make the final decision after the council has gone through the voting phase. Proving the majority is free, but subverting it will cost you power equal to the difference in votes between the two sides plus one. 
Be careful, if your power reaches zero, the current reign will end. Solving a dilemma moves the resources on the track as predicted by the red and blue gauges. The amount by which a resource moves will be revealed after the vote. Many appear against slavery, do we force uh, I? Oh really, they, they, they went for the nades, did they? Fucking, the fucking lobster people, these people, why, what, what does that do? Don't know what that does. So if I use two power and I've got eight, what's this? It gives me a leaf, it gives me a leaf. This will increase wealth. This will, what does blue mean? Decrease wealth and increase morale? I don't know, let's try it. We can't tolerate slavery. We force the merchant to free his concubine and send him away. Get out of here, you fucking dickhead. This compromises our trade agreement, but our people rejoice that we stood up for the poor woman. Many are also excited at the prospect that she may reveal the location of the mythical golden map. Legend says it leads to an endless fountain of liquid gold. Unlikely. Solving certain dilemmas will have permanent side effects on the kingdom. When this happens, a chronicle will be registered in the table above the resource track. Their effects, either positive or negative, are applied to the corresponding resources at the beginning of every reign. Positive chronicles move the corresponding resource up by one space, while negative chronicles move them down by the same amount. Our choice to free the merchant slave compromised our relationship with the southern desert lands before it even started. Add to archives. Sarah, the woman we freed from slavery, comes from a remote temple of the mother in the south of Marudi, which we call the Ivory Desert. She says the golden map is guarded by this temple. Sarah was kidnapped and enslaved by her former master while visiting the city of Tents. Her story becomes quite popular in the kingdom and spurs a burst of interest in the unexplored southern continent that she calls Confertar. Sarah claims it is the land where the ancient Sabian League once prospered and fell. Our scholars immediately start preparing a caravan to retrieve the golden map and take Sarah back home, but traversing the Ivory Desert, famous for tempests of burning white sand, will not be easy. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then this thing moved on. Ah! Oh, and that thing had already moved on, and this thing's now moved on. Of course, of course. Alright, so that goes down, that goes up a little bit. Each time a resource moves, the stability marker to the right will follow it. If the stability marker ever reaches either end of its track, the rain will end. Right, so that was two dots down, one dot up, so we've stability one lower. Gotcha! Keep all the resources in the highlighted area on the track to score more points when the rain ends. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Um, continue. Now we've got 600 million things. Gaunt Isthmus. I am an island. I am an Isthmus. I, da, 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 I don't believe in Christmas. All right, well, let's go do these ones now. We'll just do things in order, will we? Golden Harbour. The Royal Marshal Report... Why am I whistling? Why am I whistling? I need some water. Hang on. Meat bag, need water. Drink water, meat bag. There we go. Hold on a second. Hold on one, one second. Why am I facing this way? A little bit, a little bit more that way. There we go. Look at this ridiculous outfit I've got on. It's madness, I tell you. Madness. The Royal Marshal reports to us that three windmills were set on fire last night along the road between Libra and Golden Harbour. The affected millers are asking for help rebuilding their windmills. Do we fund the reconstruction of the damaged windmills? With each dilemma, the time counter on the right will increase. When it reaches a space with the skull icon, right, 
the king has a 50% chance of dying or 100% if it reaches the final space. What? Uh, nay, I, I. So everyone's going I. It's not going to cost me any power. And it's going to move wealth down yet again, but move up welfare. Fuck it, let's go. Boom. With the monetary help from the crown, a small squad of carpenters is hired to rebuild the burned out windmills with the most advanced techniques available. After the work, we were informed that they noticed the smell of an unknown alchemical substance at all three locations. It was arson. Cold blooded arson. Oh my god, that was a big uh, drop. Your moral alignment determines which rewards you get at the end of each reign. The rewards can be coins, prestige points, and or crave points. The resource track highlights the target area to score points. The more resources in the target area, the more you will be rewarded. Of course, of course. Above the resource track, there is a preview of your rewards based on the current position of the resources and your moral alignment. Right, right, of course, of course. Uh, what? Chronicles solving certain effects. Yeah, we already had that, but what is this effect? I'm lost already. I'm lost already. This is for smart people. All right, so we definitely need to do something. That, oh, it does tell us. So that would be money, maybe? All right, it's the only one with money. So we're doing this one. Talk. The High Commander has re received a message from our soldiers stationed at the troublesome northern border of the Mark of Torque. Scarum smugglers are offering to provide us large quantities of red iron, a strange metal that can break even the strongest steel. It's a scam. We're getting scamazzed. The army wants the majority of it, but there is a lot of money to be made by trading it. Do we reserve the red iron, a strong metal, for the army? When you vote against a council member, your relationship will worsen and they will eventually become your enemy. Right. Voting in accord with a council member will improve your relationship and if it reaches the maximum level, you can spend coins to form an alliance. An alliance! Wait, so that's going to give us... So, hey, reserve... What? I guess we're selling... A lot of money to be made by trading it. Now, we're going to have to do this. We need the money. We're nearly out of money already. Already. And we don't want to use our power. So, here we go. We're naying it. It's been naid. A strong army requires a strong economy to fund it. The smugglers supply us with a constant flow of red iron from the mostly unexplored lands in the northern Fola Fua Mountains. Fua! The unusual metal can be sold to the highest bidders on the open market for outrageous profits. Smugglers provide a small but steady supply of red iron to the trade guild in Duan. Duan? Duan? New preparation available. The smiths begin experimenting with ways to employ the robust metal, crafting tools, jewellery and weapons for the wealthy. However, its sturdiness makes it difficult to cast into functional forms. Despite these difficulties, the Dwan Trade Guild and our kingdom both benefit immensely from the transaction. Transactions! 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 Many among the wealthy nobility compete to acquire the few artifacts that the smiths successfully forge. Even foreigners from the south visit our markets to acquire the rare product. What's a preparation? Ooh, that thing moved on. My god, it's moving on. It's 100% moving on. Nice. Oh, the stability just launched that way. If a resource is moved twice in a row in the same direction, it will, it will move one additional step. The icon color will show you the last direction that the resource moved. White if it moved up, a black if it moved down. Got it. After the second time that a resource moves in the same direction, it will gain a momentum marker and move two additional steps. Oh, lovely. Okay, cool. I don't know why we wouldn't want that to be as cool as it is. What's this? Oh, nice. 
Nice. All right, we need more money. We still need more money. We've got three new ones. None of those give money. This one. All wed. Give me the money. Give me the money. The Ferris Smithing Guild in the southern mark of Allwed is famous for its sophisticated steelworks. The Allwedians. Ah, Allwedians. Allwedians are worried that they will lose their share of the market to the competition from red iron weaponry manufactured in Torque. They're asking to share the red iron crafting secrets to level the field. Do we force Talk to share its knowledge about steel work with Allwed? I thought I was Talk. Am I not Talk? Spend coins to corrupt a council member and change their vote. Ah, is that what that was? We've got eight coins. How do we get coins? The cost of corruption for a council member will increase each time you use it. Corrupting a council member will freeze the relationship between your houses for the current dilemma. Use corruption wisely to manage both your relationships and your power. Um, why do they want to nay it? Why do they want to nay it? So if I were to flip one of these, I could then... It's going to cost me four coins and I don't know. Look, I want to test it out. It's science, Mr. White. It's science time. What? What? Why would that be two and that would be three? Do we want to be white or do we want to be... I don't understand. I'm going to flip these nerds. Didn't flip them. Did flip them. Now, I want nay because... Um, I want the I want the fucking money. The money, give me the money. I want the money. Nay. Red iron weapons increasingly become a prized possession over which local wealthy nobles and foreign dignitaries fight, making a fortune for the mark of talk, a boon for traders. Guild Wars. Unloyal competition from red iron artisans triggered price dumping on steel goods, which eventually damaged the economy in Allwed and the income of its people. Fuck you, Allwed. Fuck you. What care do I have of these all red people? Hmm? All right, we're looking okay with the with the money. What's this? Uh, influence. Yeah, influence. We want all of these things to be up. Yeah, we do. But now we've gone too high on this. Now we've gone too high on this. We need equilibrium. We need to bring this one down. We need to bring the welfare down. That's welfare. That's welfare. What about world? This one has welfare. Let's do this one. It's got three things. A distant reward. The caravan of scholars seeking to retrieve the golden map is constantly threatened by desert raiders and is struggling to move forward. If we don't send them the military, send the military aid, they will be forced to deviate to the city of tents to stock up on supplies and hire a mercenaries. Do we send reinforcement to the Golden Map Expedition? Nay, nay, a. Um, so nay will bring that one down and that one down, which is good. Which is what I need for equilibrium, right? For equilibrium. Naying it. We're naying it. Without our help, the scholars are forced to divert to the much nearer city of tents to resupply. Yeah, we could. Glad to hear it. The Ivory Desert is fierce, and many caravaneers pay the ultimate price, including Sarah, who sadly died before she could see her home again. No! Sarah! No! Oh. Heavy is the crown that lies on the head that I put on with unity. Yes, I did. Take that, King Charles. Take that! You have to spend billions of dollars on a coronation. I spent five minutes in unity. Charles, if that is your real name. However, the expedition survives the raging storms and raider assaults, reaching the city of tents. Killed Sarah. I killed Sarah. Seen from afar, the majestic city of tents looks like a mirage. A mirage. A white temple emerges from the clear waters of an oasis, circled by a colorful sea of tents full of people haggling for goods. The temple reminds some of the many sandstone 
reminds some of the many sandstone ruins found in the south of our kingdom reading comprehension for the win for the king for the win the city is ruled by the sand priestesses an opulent version of the cult of the mother Mother. Ooh. We may worship the same goddess, but their lavish ways are in stark contrast with the sober purity of our cult. These lavish people, they are too opulent for us. The arrival of our expedition boosts trade between our countries, and news of our search for the golden map spreads among the locales. It is rumored that the sand priestesses are hiding in a secret temple in the desert. Ooh, the thought is plickening. Ah, oh, look how look how thought and plickening that is. Look, that thotted and this plickened. No, oh, the stability, the stability. We love it. We we love to see the stability. Right. So, so what? So what? Oh, I see. So white was meant it went up and black means it went down, I guess. Uh, oh, look, we've got something in the city. In the city. For money. For money. What's this? Forge red iron halberjons. Halberjons? What the hell is halberjons? A male shirt forged with the ultra's eye tells me right here. I should have just, you know, read it, I guess. A male shirt forged with the ultra-resistance metal from Enkhal. It's too expensive to equip every single man in battle, but it's perfect as a layer of protection for the most important inhabitants of the castle. It can withstand blows from a Dagels and a Shelter Servants. Dagels! Dagels! Um, that's going to cost me one gold and and that. And three of those, and I've only... Oh, so I can't... You don't have enough resources. I need three of white hats... And two, one black hat. I've got two of each. Sure. Sure, that makes all the sense in the world. Uh, let's see what Libra's Trade Guild has to offer. Uh, there we go. The City of Tents again. Drusu, a tremendously rich merchant with a ruddy smile coming from the city of tents, is offering our kingdom a ridiculously large sum of money on loan to be returned in convenient installments. Do we take the loan from Drusu, a rich merchant? I don't think so. We don't need it. Really? They want eyes? These bastards with their eyes. Uh, all right. I don't want to use power to stop the stop the nays. I guess we're going to have to eye it in. We're eyeing it. It's eyed. You can't say it's not eyed because it's eyed. Drusu sends us a large coffer full of gold ingots. Our wildest and most expensive dreams may soon come true, but some are concerned about the long-term costs of this deal. It was Eskimez. Let us hope Rayla, uh, Raya, Ray, Ray, Raela, Raela, the saint daughter of... The saint daughter of money and business will bless this risky decision. Okay, Rayla, the saint daughter of money and business. If that is your real name. Endless loan. The terms of Drusu's loan force the Indian to pay absurd interest rates. We are seeking ways to escape this ironclad contract. What? Well, shouldn't we have looked at that at first? God damn the eye people. God damn you lobster people. The lobster people always fucking us up. Oh no! I oh, know. We've hit, we've hit the end. It's over. Is it over already? Is it over already? We need to, we need to stop, we need to stop being wealthy. No more wealthy. That one's got some wealthy. Requesting funds. No, no. Yo, maybe. Yeah. What's this one? Trade grill. Prospering. We need stability. We need stability. I'm going to try this one. Boom. A distant reward. Laszlo, a botanist, requests funds to study the poisonous red cacti covering a small area of the ivory desert. Some believe them to be the tears left behind by Orsal, the saint daughter of strength, when she took the burden of human brutality upon herself to free us from it. I see. Do we fund Laszlo's research into the red cacti? Into the red cacti? 
Ah, oh, it's red cacti. So that's going to bring our, yep, knowledge up. Ah, oh, everyone's in agreement. Good work, except for the, the fucking lobster people. Aye. Aye, Captain. More knowledge is always a good thing. We authorize Laszlo to take some samples of the red cacti and we provide the means for him to do so. Excellent, excellent. Laszlo discovered that the cacti are very sturdy and need little water. They can grow almost anywhere and if boiled, prove to be healthy and nutritious. Another new preparation. Add to our chives. There we go. We saved us. No! We saved ourselves, but then we defeated ourselves. We played ourselves. No, the king has abdicated. No, no. It's so red and yellow. It's so red and yellow. End of the reign. At the end of each reign, you will gain rewards as described by your moral alignment. If you manage to put all of the resources in the target area, you'll get even more rewards. In the target area? What? What? Rebel. One, one white hat, white crown for every resource in the upper area of the track. One black for every resource in the lower area of the track. Oh, I see. Up here and then down there. Right. Right. And one additional if the central area of the track is empty. Right, right. So we actually want... Oh, that's interesting. So the idea is you want to sort of move things in stability. Some things up here, some things down there. Oh, tricky. Tricky. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Choosing your heir. At the end of each reign, you'll have to choose the moral alignment for your heir to the head of the council. The longer the reign, the more moral alignments will be available. Well, it wasn't exactly the longest reign in history, was it? A dumb... What? Greedy, extremist, greedy, rebel, moderate, opulent. Oh, I see. This will give me two hats. One gold for every step between highest and lowest resources on the track. Maximum distance. One, oh, I don't know. Moderate. Let's just go moderate. Bro. Spend your prestige and crave points to prepare for the uprising. Each preparation shows its rewards and the required number of reigns to be completed. Rewards are collected at the beginning of each reign after you complete the preparation. Additionally, most preparations unlock a dilemma that you will face in the uprising. I mean, sure, of course, 100%. Import red cacti. Research Libra's geology. Forge red iron hydrogen. Um, let's do it. I, I don't know why, but let's do it. This table summarizes the types of preparation and their rewards. Time to complete. One range of rewards, final, blah, blah, blah. Unknown, complete, fun. Yeah, okay, sure. Examples, this perfect three range to knocks a final dilemma. Okay, right, right. Oh, I'm just onto this. Makes total sense. Unlocking preparations. You unlock more preparations as you progress through the campaign. So visit this screen frequently to prepare for the big battle that is as you come. You won't be able to unlock all of the preparations in a single playthrough as some will be locked out depending on the choices you make. Okay, okay, you know, I think if I were to play this game for thousands of hours, I might begin to start understanding stuff. Manage the, manage the council and review information about the houses of the kingdom here. Spend coins to replace council members and to form alliances when your relationship level with another house is maxed out. If you form an alliance with another house, your total power increases by one. Alliances have other benefits such as reducing the cost of corruption and the cost of replacing council members. Costs are increased for enemies. With your choices, you can try to achieve the long-term goal of your house and two secondary goals. Completing them will grant you more power plus a bonus of cohesion or descent points for the uprising. Right. Narrative goal. Free the world from evil. Use the steam giants for military purposes. Steam giants. Help the architect to strengthen the walls. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, I see. I could uh, use some money here. Already. Already. 
Life is to be enjoyed. Oh, who are the snake people? Where is... Oh, there is no... Oh, I thought I saw a snake initially. Uh, well, maybe it was this one. Harmony is acceptance. Forests grow strong. Well, that's me. Hit hard. We can take it. Ape together is strong. Got the damn quote. Um, okay. I, well, um... Oh, that's their narrative goals. So should I be spending? I don't understand what spending money is. That'll make it go that way if I spend money? Oh, I see. I can spend money to find out shit about them. Gotcha. No, let's just continue. You can find all previous tutorials in the pause menu. We finished the tutorial. Right. Well, that's where I'm going to leave it for this game where I enjoyed that. That's cool. I'm going to probably play that off stream. Um, there we go. That was like the first 40 minutes, hour. I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of time spending putting this crown on my head, so that might have taken up a bit of time. I'm going to make this a highlight on Twitch. I'm going to turn this in. I'm thinking in my head, I'm going to do the whole, you know, like the first hour at 30 seconds for the for TikTok shorts, for YouTube shorts, for Facebook reels, all of that. Um, look out for that. That'll be awesome. 